<clears throat> okay, so we're going to continue on with chapter 39. <clears throat> so we're going to continue on with 39.5. Selection for individual survival and reproductive success can explain most behaviors. Behavior enhances survival and reproductive success in a population, so certain behaviors will lead to species survival and their ability to reproduce and produce offspring. Um, foraging, eating is a behavior, or looking for food rather, is a behavior essential for survival and reproduction that includes recognizing, capturing, and eating food items. Natural selection refines behaviors that enhance the efficiency of feeding. In Drosophia melanogaster, fruit flies, variation in a gene dictates foraging behavior in the larvae. Larvae with one allele travel farther while foraging than larvae with the other allele. Larvae in high-density populations benefit from foraging farther for food, while larvae in, in low-density populations benefit from short-distance foraging. Um, so if the individuals are in a high-density area, it would make sense that they would travel farther for food where there is less competition. Now, if they are in a population that has a low density, that means that there's going to be less competition for food, so it would be more beneficial to them to travel short distances um, in order to get food. Natural selection favors different alleles depending on the density of the population. <laughs> Under laboratory conditions, evolutionary changes in the frequency of these two alleles were observed over several generations. <clears throat> so here um, we see the evolution of foraging behavior. Um, these are laboratory populations. And you can see that the individuals in a low-density population, the orange ones here, um, they don't travel that far because they don't have to travel that far. Um, because they are in a low-density population, so there is less competition for food. Um, whereas these are in a high population density, um, so it is more beneficial to them to travel farther distances in order to get their food, so that there is less competition for that food. Now, of course, if they are in a low-density population, it would make sense that they wouldn't travel very far in order to um, conserve resources and energy. Mating behavior includes seeking or attracting mates, choosing among potential mates, competing for mates, and caring for offspring. Mating relationships define a number of distinct mating systems. The mating relationship between males and females varies greatly from species to species. In some species, there are no strong pair bonds, so that just means, you know, um, strong affinity between a male and a female, which can often lead to the production of offspring. In monogamous relationships, one male mates with one female. Males and females with monogamous mating systems have similar external morphologies. Um, so basically they look alike. Um, so here we have our monogamous species. You can see um, that these two individuals, male and female, look very much similar. And then we have polygamous relationships where an individual of one sex mates with several individuals of the other sex. Species with polygamous mating systems are usually sexually dimorphic, which just basically means that the male and females look different. They have different external morphologies. <laughs> polygamous relationships can be either polygynous or polyandrous. In polygyny, one male mates with many females. The males are usually more showy and larger than the females. In polyandry, one female mates with many males. The females are often more showy than the males. And then if we go back to this other slide, okay, here you see polygynous species. Um, notice that the males and females look different. And here we have polyandrous species. Mating systems in parental care, so this can vary. Um, parental care varies between different species of animals. Needs of the young are an important factor constraining evolution of mating systems. Consider bird species where chicks need a continuous supply of food. A male maximizes his reproductive success by staying with his mate and caring for his chicks. This would chicks. This would be an example of monogamy. 
Um, so because the bird species needs a lot of food, um, it is more beneficial to him to stick around to care for his young in order to ensure the survival of his young. Um, consider a bird species where chicks are soon able to feed and care for themselves, while the male would maximize his reproductive success by going out and finding other mates. Um, and again, that's because, um, the young are able to care for themselves more quickly. So he doesn't need to stick around in order to care for his young. It would be more beneficial to him to go spread his seed somewhere else and make more young. Um, certainty of paternity influences parental care and mating behavior. Females can be certain that eggs laid or young born contain her genes. However, pater uh, however paternal saturnity, ugh, paternal certainty depends on mating behavior. Paternal certainty is relatively low in species with internal fertilization because mating and birth are separated over time. Um, so in this case, males are less likely to stick around and care for their young because they're not they're not sure that those young are actually theirs. Um, it could have you know could have been another um, male's young. They just don't know because with internal fertilization, the babies come so f so far after um, copulation occurs. Certainty of paternity is much higher when egg laying and mating occur together, such as in external fertilization. In species with external fertilization, parental care is at least as likely to be my, by males as by females. Um, so again, because the certainty of paternity is much higher, then the males are more likely to stick around and care for their young, such as this male jawfish that is caring for the eggs. Sexual dimorphism results from sexual selection, a form of natural selection. In intersexual selection, members of one sex choose mates on the basis of certain traits. Intrasexual selection involves competition between members of the same sex for mates. Female choice is a type of intersexual competition. Females can drive sexual selection by choosing males with specific behaviors or features of anatomy. For example, female stock-eyed flies choose males with relatively long eye stalks. Ornaments such as long eye stalks often correlate with health and vitality. Um, so here would be your male stock-eyed flies. Um, so these, these ornaments, as you would call them, um, basically mean that the flies are are healthy. They're genetically, they have good genes, basically. So that's why the females will pick them. Male competition for mates is a source of intrasexual selection that can reduce variation among males. Such competition may involve agonistic behavior and often ritualized contest that determines which competitor gains access to a resource. The definition of fitness can be expanded beyond individual survival to help explain selfless behaviors. <coughs> Differences at a single locus can sometimes have a large effect on behavior. For example, male prairie voles pair bond with their mates, while male metal voles do not. Um, so again, a pair bond is just a, a strong affinity between a male and a female that can often lead to um, the production of offspring. The level of a specific receptor for a neurotransmitter determines which behavioral pattern develops. Um, and we haven't done the nervous system yet, but a neurotransmitter is just basically... A chemical that gets released by your neurons um, that causes some sort of response in the cell um, which the neurotransmitter binds to. So here is a pair of prairie voles that are pair bonding. When behavioral variation within a species corresponds to environmental variation, it may be evidence of past evolution. The natural diet of western garter snakes varies by population. Coastal populations feed mostly on banana slugs, while inland populations rarely eat banana slugs. Studies have shown that the difference in diet are genetic. The two populations differ in their ability to detect and respond to specific odor molecules produced by the banana slugs. So this would be a western garter snake from a coastal habitat that's eating banana slug. Natural selection favors behavior that maximizes an individual's survival and reproduction. These behaviors are often selfish. On occasion, some animals behave in ways that reduce their fitness but increase the fitness of others. 
This kind of behavior is called altruism or selflessness. An example of that would be the Belding's ground squirrel. Under threat from a predator, an individual Belding's ground squirrel will make an alarm call to warn the others. Um, but this decreases their chance of survival because they are sticking out to predators. Even though they are warning um, others from their population, they are putting themselves at risk. So that's altruism. Um, another example in naked mole rat populations, non-reproductive individuals may sacrifice their lives protecting their reproductive queen and kings from predators. So here's your beautiful naked mole rats. Altruism can be explained by inclusive fitness. Inclusive fitness is the total effect an individual has on proliferating its genes by producing offspring and helping close relatives to produce offspring. William Hamilton proposed a quantitative measure for predicting when natural selection would favor altruistic acts among related individuals. There are three key variables in an altruistic act. Benefit to the recipient, cost to the altruist, and the coefficient of relatedness, which is the fraction of genes that on average are shared. So how closely related are the individuals um, in the altruistic act? Natural selection favors altruism when RB is greater than C. So R is the coefficient of relatedness, how closely related um, two individuals are, B is the benefit to the recipient, and C is the cost to the altruist. So this is um, this inequality is called Hamilton's rule. We can uh, talk about Hamilton's rule using the following example of a girl who risks her life to save her brother. So assume the average individual has two children. As a result of the sister's action, the brother can now father two children. So B, benefit to the recipient, is going to be two. The sister has a 25% chance of dying and not being able to have her own two children. So C, cost, is going to be 25% or 0.25 times the two children that she wouldn't be able to have. So that'd be 0.5. The brother and sister, on average, share half of their genes. So R, the coefficient of relatedness, is 0.5. So if um, the sister saves her brother, RB equals 1, which is greater than C, which is the cost um, to her, which is 0.5. Um, so basically what this is saying is that she should save her brother. And this just shows... Um, how we come up with the coefficient of relatedness between the two siblings. So you get a 50% chance of getting one allele from your parent and a 50% chance of getting the other allele. Kin selection is the natural selection that favors this kind of altruistic behavior by enhancing reproductive success of, re of relatives.